International. And today we're going to speak about how to, you know, price a property. We have a, you know, a beautiful luxury market here in Honolulu, and yet, you know, pricing is at a science. I remember a friend was visiting from LA one day and said, oh my God, how do you ever price homes? They're all so different because, you know, in the more um, luxury affluent neighborhoods, they're, they're not track homes, they're definitely custom homes. But before we go there today, I, I wanted to um, give you one of my philosophies in life. And I, I saw a quote the other day that pretty much says it, it's be the architect of your life, design it exactly as you want. And, you know, we were talking about, we had our team meeting here um, two days ago, when we, we put on a barbecue for our agents. And, you know, I basically said, you know, what kind of business do you have? And I've always lived by the theory that you want to fund your life, not have the business take over your life. And one of the exercises that we went through that I thought you, I would enjoy sharing with you all today is, you know, putting a, um, a value or wow effect on the different things that you enjoy doing and putting it into your planner each week. For instance, you um, and I learned this from a, a wonderful consultant that was a, a life coach for me, which I was with him for 10 years, many years ago, Dr. Fred Gross from New Zealand. And, you know, he taught us this concept of having 10s, 25s, 50s and 100s in your life. And, you know, a 10 would be something that you enjoy every day. So it might be uh, picking up a coffee or going through the drive through now with COVID, um, you know, or daily exercising. You know, it just gives you a really good thought. Um, you know, it, gives, it allows you to be uh, happy, productive and accomplished, you know, to start your day and be accomplished. 25, 25 is maybe something weekly you enjoy. It could be, for instance, um, I'm currently now doing a, a private Pilates class with my best friend of 30 years. I mean, and that's something I go, wow, I look forward to every week and I don't mind if I work 12, 14 hour days, but that's something that I truly look forward to. Then a 50, I'll give you an example of a 50, something monthly you might enjoy doing. And for instance, something that I enjoy in our home is having fresh flowers and I, was able to find from the farmer's market in Manoa, beautiful anthuriums uh, from the big island and they last a month. So every month you'll see me down there picking up some anthuriums to put into our home. Now the tricky one is what is a 100? Um, you know, 100s often comes into the traveling of, of course. And, you know, with us down in, you know, a lot of lockdown and quarantine, we have to be real creative and, you know, please feel free to, um, you know, respond by Facebook or text on some other ideas. Um, everyone got a little stuck there for 100s. And but one of the, two of the things that did come up was possibly, you know, a stay vacation in your area. I know I'm starting to see more ads on our hotels here for local Kama Aina rates. But then another big thing this time of year is maybe it's the sales at Saks, which has 70% off, or Neiman Marcus, which has 75% off. So they're the uh, 100s that, you know, you might do once a year. So just, just opening up some fun things to keep life fun. And when, you, when you're working hard with um, your career, your family, or whatever you might be working on right now. Uh, just a quick update on the market this week. We are busy. Um, my, everybody's busy in real estate. And I bumped into a financial planner the other day, and they're really busy. Um, to give you an idea, the number of sold properties that occurred this week was the, um, it's, it's the highest it's been since December. So we are in a little bit of a normal market right now that we were back last year. The number of um, houses going in sales was the highest since it's been mid-March before COVID started. So we are in a very busy season right now. So, you know, the topic we're talking about today is how does one price in today's marketplace? And you have to know the market in Hawaii and you have to know the history the demographics, the type of buyer buying a properties, but a lot of um, thinking and due diligence goes into how I've trained my team on how to price properties. Um, you know, several factors that will affect the right price, of course, is how the home shows, um, the condition of the home, the current markets. And of course, you know, like I talked in my last um, last week, I was talking about lifestyle homes. You know, with COVID, people really just want to be able to do a lot of their activities at home now versus going to a gym or, 
or going to the beach, et cetera. And, you know, looking at what value that may bring more uh, to the table for a client. Uh, what we do, I'm going to give you two examples to, so you can get into my thought process right now. Um, you know, when you walk into, for instance, um, uh, say a high end luxury condo that mightn't be one of the new condos right now, but the plus factor of these condos is definitely the square footage. Newer condos might be 1100 square feet. These older established luxury buildings might be 1900 square feet. Well, how do you price something like that when the general public really wants to be in the hot spots? Well, what we do, of course, start with the building, see what the history is, see what the profile of the um, buyer is, the supply and demand, of course, what's going on in the building. We sort of look at the price per square foot. What's the tax assessed value this year compared to a year or two when the market was you know, also very strong? So it's a give and take. We look at, does somebody want a new condo or do they want an older condo with larger square footage? But then we go outside and we look at other buildings built in the same you know, the same age and see what the activity has been with those buildings. And then we position our price accordingly. What will somebody pay? Um, will they, if it's a two or three bedroom, will they pay, how much more will they pay for a three bedroom? We go back and if there's no comparables in that building, we look at other buildings. What are people paying for three bedrooms right now? What are single family, single family homes selling for three bedrooms? How high is the maintenance fee? You know, knowing the buyer is really important. I would say, generally speaking, our company, 50% of our business is buyers. 50% of our business is clients listing their property. Knowing buyers is really important when we list our clients' properties because we can pretty much tell our sellers, this is what a buyer is willing to pay, generally speaking. Um, another big factor in pricing properties, how we price, is calling realtors who've had um, listings pending in escrow, um, who've sold properties. Some of the questions we might say is, you know, where did your buyer come from? What, what else is that buyer buying? If they didn't buy your property, what else are they buying? So we know what our competition is. So knowing your competition is really important when you're pricing properties. Um, huge factor. Uh, how to position your pricing is another factor. Um, I had a, a, a very luxurious home that was priced, you know, over four million, a little over four million. But the but the thought was, do we price it under four million? And I said, well, you know, you're going to get the luxury buyer looking from four to say seven million dollars. We may miss that buyer if they price at three point eight million. So sometimes you want to price a little higher to get into that market with higher properties, where someone might come into that property and say, wow, I get all that for that much money. Well, if you price under a certain mark, that might be at the top of their budget, where they're not willing to pay close to that, and it may devalue the property. Just some thoughts um, that I wanted to share today on pricing. And, you know, feel free to definitely uh, contact me on questions you might have on pricing your property in the near future. The, um, let me um, go over also the, um, you know, other items that we've thought about pricing is how we've got more than the last sale, the quality of the property. And, you know, when, when the biggest thing, when a property has been very upgraded, you have to be able to express that to clients. And those buyers don't come often to really appreciate the top of the line luxury finishings in a home. And that's where, you know, as a, as a broker and how our agents in our company, we get on the phone and we talk to the brokers who possibly have those clients and have a private showing because we believe in the price. So a big factor pricing properties, you, your broker and you yourself must believe in the price to get that property sold and it will happen.